It's a busy weekday morning here in Chorley in Lancashire and you join us, of course, on an episode of the Late Break Show for Barn Finds. And that is the garage in question, that one there with all the detritus next to it, because in there is not just a special M Sport BMW, but a version of that that's hardly ever seen. In fact, there's thought to be hardly any left in existence and it's been in there for over 30 years. And today's the day we are going to dig it out and maybe, maybe hear it. So I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. This is Peter. Peter. Thank, first of all, thank you so much for contacting me. My pleasure. Because you've done what I've asked. You've left it with a tree growing out in front of the garage. So let's rewind. How does your life with this car begin? And what is it? It's uh, a BMW M535i lightweight. Um, it's built in South Africa and was only built in South Africa. Um, it's, it was one of seven homologation specials. And I came across it um, when I was working in South Africa as a young engineer straight from university. I bought this car and I used it for two years and I fell in love with it. Uh, so this is 30, 33 years ago. 33, 33 years, years, ago. years ago. So this is an E12. It's, as, an, E12, as it's an E12, but it, the, this is the, the last of the M535Is. Um, it was only built there and it was um, it was basically, it, it was an E12, but with an E28 interior. So it was a transition car. So it's, it's lived in here for, for 33 years. I know you said off camera that you built this garage for this car. Correct, yes, that's correct. So it's only ever yeah. lived in the UK here. Correct. 31 years ago, it was put in there. Wow. And it's, it's never moved since. So it went in here as a running driving car? Yes, it was driven in there, fine. So we, we've got a but, bit of a sapling to chopped down yeah you said that tree's been there 12 years 12 think? years that was yeah the last time it was the door was opened was 12 years ago so you haven't it, seen the car in 12 i years. haven't seen the car in 12 years so yeah right i gotta say i'm really yeah. i'm really excited have a little peek first maybe yeah sure. just to see what we're dealing with so you haven't seen this in 12, 12 years nope i can't see it <laughs> you just it's see pretty the car. <laughs> go in there I can see a door, a bed, a ladder, another door. There's a wheel and a white arch. So that's a Toshiba microwave oven, but that's not interesting. What is interesting is this. The M Sport decal on the doors. We're starting to see a bit of M535i. Got a reasonable amount of rubbish to get out this side. And then we'll... um. And then we'll get they we'll get the car out after that. This is not fly tipping, just so you know. This is not fly tipping. This is when the glamour of YouTube comes back in your face. Back in your face. Put it like this. If you don't subscribe to The Late Break Show, I'm going to come around your house, I'll find out where you live, and I'm going to fly tip a load of 80s and 90s household soft furnishings outside your house. I won't, because it's evil. So comfortable. <laughs> We're about to uncover all the back of the garage and the big door. But before we do, we thought, we've got rid of this stuff. Just have a quick look. This door, the front wing. This is the first time we've seen the bodywork in ages, isn't it? Yeah, 12 years. I have to say, it looks really dry and clean. Fortunately. Down there, the body colored kind of motorsport bumper. Now, if you've been watching us emptying um, the side door of the garage and wondering why there's a mysterious third man on the job, this man is Tony Chamberlain, a.k.a. Tony BMW. 
That is what you're called, it is, isn't it? Yes, yeah. And he is, I'm, I'm pretty sure, one of the authorities in this country on E12 BMW. Do you have a bit of an obsession with them? I do, yeah. It's a long one, about 30 years. And, and how many have you restored? Uh, at least 10. As a hobby? Yes, not a as business. a hobby and a part-time thing. Yeah. And you've owned how many? Um, I've had about 20 through my hands, yeah. And there's only 200 in the world sort of surviving. So. There's only 200 in the world left? Yes, yes. And yeah. this, f even for you, is that extra special? Yes, yes. Because it's the South African homologation thing. Yeah. So you were saying, Peter, yeah. that, that you thought only seven of these were actually made of this particular type? That's what the previous owner told me. I managed to trace him in Johannesburg before I brought it back here. And he, he usually wanted to tell me about it, the history. Yeah. Um, it was a friend of Cliff Cootsey that used to race a similar car. Regardless of lightweight or not, what we do know is E12 5 Series BMWs, they do like to rot, don't they? Oh, they're notorious for it. It was last started in the 90s, about 94, 95. You last started it in 94, 95? Yeah, yeah. My gosh, it hasn't run since then? Nope. <laughs> you made short work of that. Timber! Timber! <laughs> well done. Yeah. I don't get bored of doing this bit. <laughs> that rubber, that rubber yeah. spoiler there. Is it, what sort of condition is it? Is it it's cracked really or anything? Good. No, it's not cracked. It's really good. Yeah. It's really supple. They're notorious for cracking. I bet they are. That's almost like new, isn't it? Because this has been out of UV light. Yeah, that's yeah. what saved it. You see the BMW badge there, look. Right, let's get all this bedding off it and over there and you've got a spare set of alloys here peter i'm sure these you knew are the that. uk ones these these are these are the imperial ones these are because uh, the what? metric on the car oh, the of th course. 390 trx's the first low profile cars tire cars I yeah think the TRX was the ones. six and a half by 14 marley bbs et22 look at these Well, well, bloody well. Oh, it's got a Piranha sticker on it. So it's made by Piranha. Your favourite. My favourite. We were just off camera talking about Piranha being like the South African Shelby. Piranha Capris, Piranha Granadas. And they made this louver. And you said you've got the receipt for it still. I sure have. <laughs> I'll show you that in my file later. Now that we've got a light on. Mm-hmm. I've seen you going around, kind of Topping. touching it and tapping it. Yeah, because it, it feels, it, just, it sounds tinny, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel very BMW-like in that no. respect. And the doors, when you close them, they're not, there's not a clunk like a typical BMW. There's, uh, it's because of the sound insulation that was lacking on these for lightweight reasons. Yeah. How does it feel to see it again like this, with the cloths off and... It brings back memories. Does it? It's happy memories. Because you said, uh, you said, oh, it's to drive, it's like something else. Sublime. The yeah. sound, second gear, pull like a train, you know, so controllable, very tail happy. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. You're annoyed about the repair on the front end, aren't it's you? It's just the quality is just rubbish. That was never. Uh, is that one of the reasons why it's. Probably. I mean, I like things being nice and perfect, and but, you know, it's. It tarnish it, but we'll get it back to yeah. pristine. It's, it's easy enough to repair. But it is easy it's, enough. It's, it's, uh... Let's have a look inside it. I'll sure. let you go in. Go on. Looking at the seats and everything, bit of bolster wear on there, but that, that was yeah. No yeah. sign of mice. That's the main thing. No sign of rats. Bit of mould where your hands go, but that's again to be expected. Dash looks excellent. You got a crook lock on no. the gear stick. Brakes not on, so they're going to not be not be seen. I hope not. And there's a Garfield on the back seat. You're aware of this? 
Yes, I'm a cat person, so. Okay. It's a racing golf. It is a it is a Grand Prix golf field. Yes. Tony's it, Tony's behind there itching to see under the bonnet. So let's have a look under the bonnet. Let's push it back and then forward again. Yeah. That's it. Oh, this is of course this is when BMW numbers meant the real capacity. Yeah, so three yeah. five being three and a half liter. Three and a half liter. Yeah. But this, what makes this different from from the other cars then? So what what are we looking at? Straight six, three and a half liter, known as the M90 engine, so a forerunner to the M30, which is the, mo the more popular one. Yeah. Uh, these had a sort of slightly different bore and stroke, um, a lot more raw power, low grunt, low end torque. Yeah. yeah. I haven't got another one to compare it to, but you. It's very clean. What are you? What What are you seeing here? that's different. Um. The fuse box is different, so that looks very much like an E28 fuse box. Uh, the servos are the same, twin servos. Yeah. Uh, then problematic, notorious problematic, but... Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, and it's got a six branch manifold on this as well, which I haven't seen. Normally they're just a cast manifold. Ah, uh, yes. In terms of running some checks before we even consider about trying to fire it up, what should we do? Uh, check the oil. Pull the plugs, check, the, you know, spray some oil down the bores, try and turn it over by hand. Yeah. Um, go from there. Yeah. Okay. I'll be your apprentice. You tell me what you want me to do because you know your way around these engines way better than I do. So um, I just know the basics. Yep. I've brought a really good jump pack with me and a couple of basic tools as normal in barn finds. I can't bring everything. But when I knew Tony was coming, Tony said, I'll bring some spares, don't you worry. <laughs> How many spares have you brought? Uh, there's Enough to replace just about everything you can see. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Right. And in true homologation style, it looks rudimental. <laughs> Very. Doesn't it? Rusty. Does its job? No. Yeah. The internet told me to buy it, so I did. I've been promised it's amazing. If it's shit, I'll take it back. We've got ignition lights. Yeah. Fuel gauges all over the place. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Don't what? like the sound of that. Was that coming from the top of the engine? Mm. Was it? It sounded like it, didn't it? Just again, Peter. I don't like that at all. What on earth? I have never heard that. It sounds like something mechanical's banging against the inside of the cam cover there. Is it like banging cam? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Bit of a state of confusion here. You've opened up dozens of these engines, Tony, and you've never heard that sound no, before. Not that noise. You're a bit stressed out about it. Very much. Because so. it is mysterious. Tony's just taken the rocker cover off and it's as clean as a whistle and there's no sign of any broken rockers. They seem to be operating as they should. And we, we, when you were turning over the engine, we were both going, is it coming from the top, the bottom? Is it like a seized ancillary? Because I've had that before. What the hell? So we're going to... I don't really know what we should do next. What do you think we should do next? Now we'll turn it over again now. We've got the cam cover off. Um, you go around the back. We'll listen to it from all sides just to see if I can identify where the noise is coming from. Yeah. It's not the starter motor. 
it's for me anyway it's coming from sort of this end at the top but it's hard it's definitely not down there it's turning over wasn't mm -hmm. it the, the belts were, were moving so yeah so if the impellers seized seized or it's catching if there's corroded inside or something could that be yeah there is no water. yeah well i suppose that might be a, an opportunity to sort of put your screwdriver against the, the, the water pump yeah okay try again yeah yeah yep. No, it's over there. It's definitely here. Ah. It felt more like the rocker was moving and then the spring was following it. Right. And smacking up the back of the rocker. Right. I'm just wondering, is it just purely down to lubrication? That the valve's just a little bit sticky. They're dry. And the rocker's moving and the valve's not coming with it. Yeah. The valve's going, oh, rock me rockers away and whack. Yeah. And that's just whacking up the back of the yeah because that's the frequency and as i say when you touch the rocker there you can feel the the valve whacking on the back of it yeah so if that's it, sh case, it should be following it up and down how do we lose i think we just put some oil in it so if you can yeah in onto the back of all the valves and the rockers okay let's go for it yep that was my granddad's all okay mm -hmm. excellent they don't really the technology doesn't change really <laughs> does it didn't have to, did it? No, uh, just bloody works. And I've got exactly. a tiny little one as well, a really cute one. Yeah. Voila. Less frequent. Yes. Lou. That's hard there. Yeah. yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. And yeah. Those. Yeah. And two. Right. So we've gone from all valve sticking to two. Yep. That's because you glugged that fluid down there. That's good. I'm tempted to spray a bit of WD-40 down the, down the valve stems because that'll soak its way down, won't it? Yeah, will you? So while we're waiting for the, um, the penetrating oil to penetrate, in those two end stuck valves. We just thought we'd take the um, expansion tank off, boil a kettle and rinse out the sludge in it, put some oh, fresh okay. water in it and... Uh, the other ones. The other one ah, yeah, that's that one. Go forth Thank you. and boil ye. I didn't bring the right jug, don't judge me. Recap, we've been waiting for the penetrating oil on these two sticky valves in the hope that they'll unstick. While we've been doing that, we've taken off the, the header tank from the, the rad, rinsed it through and boiled it, uh, topped it up with water. Now we're going to turn it over and see if there is no clicky noise. If there's no clicky noise, we can introduce sparks and maybe fuel. Hurrah. Yeah, <laughs> just that. Yeah. Oh, don't want now. Is that one? Just one, that one now. I don't think they've got good enough purchase. Should we take them, should we take it off this battery and just go from that battery? Um, well, I've actually got a proper battery that'll plug straight into there. The proper one off my car. E12. You brought your own BMW yes. yeah. E12 535. M535 battery, yes. This seems to be the nemesis of every barn find. <laughs> I bring what I think to be a good starter pack thing and it never works properly. WTF. What's really cool is that you've documented the car in such detail in these folders. I've tried to just keep everything about it, every receipt, every little letter I wrote to try and find out more about it. And it's amazing. It's, it's, it's all in, in here. You've got receipts, you've got um, road tests from the period that I was just having a quick look at, which are marvellous. Uh, you've also got a boot full of spares, everything. Magazines. I mean, I mean, look, everything from spare grills, not bare grills, spare grills. And um, this this period louvered back, back piece, oh, Oops. sorry, no that we were looking at earlier, which I think is amazing which 
brings me on to this photo that you've you've just shown me earlier. So yes. that is the car when it was pretty new. That was about 18 months old when the second owner, these Pritzes were given to him by the first owner. Okay. This is when it hadn't got a tow bar. And it was, yes. This was pre tow bar. Pre, pre tow bar. And this was after AC because originally it had no AC, no nothing, no radio. Yeah. Not anything at Wind all. Wind down windows, no sunroof. Wind, exactly. No soundproofing. Lightweight. And that's what makes it lightweight. And we'll come on to that because there's a, there's a bit of uh, background from BMW about it in there. But this is from the second owner. This is, he, he loved it so much, he painted his boat in the same M colors. That is brilliant. So he's got the, the car with his speedboat. Oh, forgive it for having a tow bar now because it's got an M Sport painted speedboat, <laughs> which is the coolest yeah, accessory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that, is that from the auction you bought it from? That is the day, that's when I went to pick it up because I bought it, that's one of the day I bought it. Okay, so that's it in the auction? That's it in the auction, yes. Okay, so now, now we're getting, things are getting interesting. It's you, topless, with a gun, on the bonnet. On safari, we, you know, you had to, on safari you had to have, this. yes, in this, yes. So this is your part of your big road trip you did in this, it? This is what, well, in, I had short road trips in Secunda just to, uh, on safari and stuff because it, it's up north and yep. away from, uh, but on you know safari Kruger National Park several times in it and that, that's taken in Kruger National Park. Is that, that Kruger National? That's Park? Kruger National Park. That's me on the gates of it there with the with the BM with the BM. So uh, that's ace. Yes. And then there's some kids that were love the car, so they're just playing by it. You know, it was there going, it wow. It's just you know, <laughs> so yeah. So uh, now that's the photo you sent me. Correct. When you contacted the, the late break show, this was yes. one of the shots, and I just went, "Oh my yes. gosh!" That's that's after I just I've, I bought it. You know, it's about a month or so after I bought it, and I tea cutted it, and I repainted the orange on the M stripes because it had faded. And, yes. And brought it back. You know, you, you can still see the uh, the masking where I I did it. What time? Yeah. Uh, that's either roadworthy or being for exports when I. Was, be, was being shipped back to the UK. Okay, so next to another set. Next of, to a 911. Is that a brown 911? It's, it's or a maroon, I think. Oh, maroon. Yeah. And, and then, then that, that's when I dropped it off at the shipping agency. That's the last time I saw it in South Africa. The next time I saw it was in Leeds when it had arrived on the ship um, a few months later. Gosh. Um, this is all fantastic backstory for the car. Mm -hmm. And I've got to see this BMW letter that you you were talking right. about um, that just details what makes it a lightweight homologation car compared to a normal M535i. That's it. Okay, that's, that's it. The one, there we it? go. Yeah, yeah. That's their envelope. They sent it in in 1991. Oh, that's when it was that's, the ultimate driving machine yeah, slogan. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's that's the uh, that's the letter from BMW saying because I I was trying to find out all about it. You know, I wrote to uh, Tony Viana, who was involved with it. Uh, Cliff Cootsey, who was a friend of the second owner, who's, and that's when he told me about it. And um, Is this when also, he said this is a special car? And he car? said it's, he told me it's a special, after I bought it, and I was trying to find out why it's so tinny and all the rest of it, and it's <laughs> like, and he told me it's one of seven, uh, and the production run yeah. was meant to be 100, but they because the series was changed from Group 1 to Group N, they didn't have to do it anymore. So, right, right. So they, only seven were produced, so this is one of seven. So and this, I, this is I, a fact from 1991? Yes, from BMW. Because so, I wrote to BMW in Germany and then they passed it on to South Africa to reply to. Yeah. So, uh, that Dear was, Mr. That was Harris, that. we're in receipt of your telefax dated 5th of April 91, addressed to our parent company in Germany and forwarded to our, our office for reply. With regards to your queries, we'd like to advise the following. The number of models produced was between 220 and 230, which took place in 82 and 83. The weight saving achieved was 60 kilos. Mm -hmm. This vehicle was a winner in Group 1 series in 82 and 83. We regret we're unable to provide precise information as we no longer are in possession of the records going back that far. But the information provider was obtained from people who were involved directly with the vehicle at that time. We trust we have been of assistance and thank you for your kind remarks. There we go. Please be assured of our sincere interest at all times and we wish you many safe and trouble-free miles of BMW motoring. In the ultimate driving machine. I know, what a slogan. Mm -hmm. So that explains but 
what makes this car special and tinny mm. and bare bones. It was so special. I got so many good memories blasting down South Africa in it. Yeah. I mean, for a weekend, I went to Cape Town, as you do, a thousand miles there, <laughs> a thousand miles back. For a weekend. For a weekend. Because it was the ultimate because driving machine. Because it was machine. the ultimate driving machine. And it was, you know, 20 hour drive nonstop all the way down I like South the Africa. fact that you've even got like happy memories of breaking down in it. Yeah, everything about this car's happy memories. Yeah. Hopefully still will be once it gets back on the road. And, and it is, to keep, you're, keep, you're keeping it? Definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. So the next time that people see this car, it'll be on the road? Yes. That's, that's, yes. that's the challenge. Because yes. I want to come back and see it and yeah. see it. It driving. won't take too much, but it's getting the time. You know. I mean, it, it doesn't need much to go through an MOT. It, it's in such good condition. I yeah. mean, it, it's just, you know, it's... You, honestly, it's, it, it's been well preserved here. Yeah. I mean, against all odds, I was yeah. expecting that you might find something quite rotten today. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tony's worked on many and, you know, the, they end up being rust boxes and just disappearing with corrosion. Yeah. But this one's managed to stand the test of time. Yeah, it's lovely. We're going to now pull it out. Tony's just put the cam cover back on. We're going to get it off the axle stands and we're going to get it out in the open before the end of the day. Who knows, it might start. I don't know. I'm ready. You're clear? No hands, Niv? No hands. Right. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! That's it. Woohoo! <laughs> so that is no valve stuck. You've put the airbox back on. I think we get it outside. Maybe we should, what about firing it up and drive it out? Oh, now you're talking my language. That's brilliant, that's quiet now. Weirdly, when we stopped filming, Tony just connected up um, at the back end there uh, and we heard the fuel pump go. So the electric fuel pump works, it's not seized, which is, has been a common problem in previous barn finds. So we could put fuel in there or use a bypass method, which is, I'll let you decide as the expert, Tony. <laughs> Now you're probably wondering what this amazing looking contraption that might look slightly ballistic is. This is Tony BMW's can of hope that Tony here put together specially for this event and it's amazing. So has that got a fuel pump on the back yeah, of it? Yeah. And it's got a return, Flow and return and a delivery. So for a fuel injected car especially, this is a perfect barn fine resurrection tool of which I am going to most definitely try and buy one off you. So. Give the starter a rest. Yeah, well, it needs a fuel pressure gauge as well, isn't it? Because we don't know whether the... We don't know. If it's even got any pressure. No. Oh, so close. So close. Do they, is it like a tapping a solenoid? It yeah, sometimes yeah. shocks it. Yeah. Okay, is everybody ready and everybody happy to try this one one more time? Good. Let's begin. <laughs> wow. Fire in the hole. You want to get the throttle body, Tony? Yep. Oh. Oh, my goodness.
Not all six. Not five. So it's on five. Definitely not on six. Yeah. <laughs> that was much better. That's six. That's it. That's six cylinders. That's the noise. Yeah. Oh! Ah, you waited three decades for that. And it's idling really nicely, isn't it? We've got it running. Hallelujah. I'm so chuffed. And I'm... No one's more chuffed than you are. Listen to that sound. Yeah, listen. Listen to that. And... The brakes are seized on, despite the fact it's been off the ground uh, jacked up. So it's getting dark. There's a small chance we can unseize them and get the car out. If we can't, please forgive us. Uh, we have got it running. Big thanks to BMW Tony, or no, Tony BMW. Well, I can't control the throttle. Yeah. I think it's Okay. Try that again. Yeah, yeah. That one's spinning as well. Yeah. They're both going. Well, as you can see, it's dark. It's taken all day, and against quite a few odds, we've managed to get the car running and driving out of the garage under its own steam, which is what you did. 31 years ago. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Thank you to, to Tony, AKA Tony BMW, <laughs> for helping out. I couldn't have done it without you. Um, thank you for letting us come and do this, Peter. I mean, I know my it's, pleasure. Yeah, it's been you. exciting. Some frustration, some highs, some lows, but ultimately I, I did stay optimistic. So I hope you've enjoyed this special barn find of what is perhaps the rarest BMW M car in existence, we don't know, uh, on the Late Break Show. Um, subscribe, feel free to comment. If you want to support us via Patreon, you're more than welcome. You'll be able to see videos like this typically early. Thank you. <laughs>